you tuning in at Vardis's Views on the Continent on uh, African Media. And today we are looking at the Visa Free Year Africa asking the question of uh, whether it is a catalyst for continental growth and uh, transformation. In the 21st century, a lot has happened not only in Africa, but across uh, the global world. Uh, Mr. Elijah Enoku, I will want to uh, uh, see you uh, answer this question, which I forwarded to uh, actually to Wally, and he was very categorical, like there is nobody that can uh, stop a nation from uh, growing but then uh, I, I want to, do you share the same perspective we know whatever thing that is happening i, I i've come to realize that it's difficult to dissociate uh, uh, politics from the economy from social life and whatsoever so do you really think that uh, africa is void of these uh, what i can call uh, uh, economic terrorism or do you think Africa is free from geopolitical man, uh, manoeuvre that is actually sinking the economy of African states and derailing uh, the uh, intra-Africa trade? What's your perspective on this? I will say categorically no. Africa is not free, Clarice. And I will give you concrete examples. Mm -hmm. Africa is not free from this manoeuvre, geopolitical manoeuvre from the West. But the thing is, I always say this and I'll say it again. If you are having a problem in your house with your husband or with your wife, and you do not allow outsiders to come in and intervene, you can solve that problem. But if you allow outsiders to come in, they're going to solve it according to their own solution, whatever it is, to their benefits. Absolutely. That is what we are having in Africa. The truth is, there is geopolitical maneuvering going on in Africa, whether you're talking about conflicts, people who are benefiting. If you look at the problems that are going on in Eastern Republic of Congo, where you have the M23, you have the Woji Woji, you have more than 23 rebel groups that are fighting. That zone alone, as we speak, carries more than, I would say, between 25 to 30% of the world reserves instead of mineral resources. I'm talking about metals, metals where you talk about uh, cobalt, all these new metals that are going to be used in technology and food. That Eastern Republic of Congo itself carries a huge potential of those resources and gold. So you f find international, what we call blood money. You have Belgium's organizations, I mean, uh, Belgian companies that are secretly signing deals with rebel leaders. They know that in an Africa where you have free trade, in an Africa where you have Peace in an Africa where you have people being in charge of their resources. These people will not be able to do what they are doing in that Eastern Republic of Congo. Take Sudan, as you're speaking. The United Arab Emirates, together with the United States, are playing cat and dog between committee and 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 and, 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 the, and the and the other rebel uh, general. Mm -hmm. They are playing hard and dog because they know if you go to Darfur, where the gold mines are, where Hamidi came from. That is where the crux of the matter is. These people, I, I, I'm not going to hide away from telling you that, yes, there is maneuver that is going on in Africa. This maneuver that is going on in Africa. If you talk about France, before they were being kicked away from the Sahel, they knew what they were miracle from that region. That's why they don't want anything to happen in that region. So we, as Africans, Clarice, to answer your question in total, we as Africans are the ones allowing these people to come in there, destabilize us, carry away our resources, do all these things, and then we are left with peanuts. And we begin to fight ourselves. And we believe that, you know, if we go to France, if we go to North America, like where I am, that's where we are better off. I did not even need to be here. I did not. And say the same thing with the rest of Africa that are out here. They don't even need to be here. If we have what it takes in Africa, a continental free trade area, if we have a visa free. If we have the economy of, of Africans that are being controlled by Africans, mm -hmm. as we speak, Clarice, the Kenyan president, in the name of Dr. William Ruto, suggested a peace path for the problem in Sudan. Hamiti, one of the rebel leaders, rejected the peace path in favor of an American sponsored and uh, 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 UAE, 
sponsor agreement. We are rejecting African solutions to African problems in favor of some Western solutions to African problems. This is where we find ourselves. And it's the same thing what we are talking about here. The African liberalization of the economies of Africa so that Africans can move freely within Africa. If we talk about insecurity that my colleague talked about, where don't you find insecurity? The Biafra problem in Nigeria has spilled over to Cameroon. The Amazonia problem in Cameroon will be spilling over to Nigeria. The problem in Central African Republic is spilling over to Cameroon. The problem in Chad is spilling over. The problem in the Sahel region in Burkina Faso is spilling over to Niger. The problem in Mali is spilling over to... So there is nothing like one African country trying to isolate itself and say, oh, no, I don't want to open my economy because my neighbor has this. We all have problems in Africa. And the problem should be solved as an African problem. The problem should be solved like the way, let me give you an example of the way the European Union came about the European Union. They came out with the preamble just like we have Africa 2063, and they put conditions in place and say, before you join the European Union, you have to make sure that your economy is brought to this level. You have to make sure that the corruption in your country is brought to this level. You have to make sure that it, they give conditions and every country was working towards that condition. And before every country joined, they made sure that they were examined at the European Commission, that they have met those conditions. If the African Union is working towards something like this, they can put strategies in place, like my colleague said, technology in place to monitor the institution. You know, come together and say, if you want to be part of this, you know, free trade, so free that we are all opening up, put your house in order, Mr. Mayor. If you don't put your house in order, you are not going to join this. People are going to work towards that common goal. So Absolutely. this idea of leaving Western Union, I mean, Western countries come in there and exploit us and make us as if we are not able to manage our own economy or we are not able to liberalize our own economy and free with one another, it's a ploy. And I'll say, answer your question, yes, 100 percent. There's geopolitical maneuvering happening in Africa, but we are allowing ourselves to be manipulated. As long as we stand our ground and we know what we want, it will not happen, Clarice.